hello. My name is Kim Addis, and I am the president and founder of Frame of Mind Coaching. And I want to welcome all of you to the Frame of Mind Coaching podcast, where we invite guests from all over the world, leaders typically, to come onto the show and get coached live and in person. Today, I want to introduce to you my guest. His name is Greg Siegel, and he is the president and CEO of a company called Alice.com. Greg, welcome. Thank you. Nice to, nice to be here. So first, where are you located? I am in Boston, of all places. No Boston snow on the with, ground, thankfully. Boston but, without a Boston accent. Well, originally from Connecticut. So Connecticut folks talk fast. Boston has you know the, the obvious accent, but I would say most people in Boston don't have a Boston accent. So if you're Canadian, you would disagree. But anyway, uh, <laughs> tell us what is Alice.com? Uh, so Alice is a uh, B2B sales and marketing platform for enterprises, um, and we use gifting as a way to uh, connect with people and get to know them, uh, what we call the five to nine, which is anything that's not your nine to five. So we use gifting as a way to be able to, to invest in relationships with people, and that uh, is one of the top ways that you can show that you have appreciation and build reciprocity and you know depth of the uh, uh, depth of those relationships as you're as you're going into it. So can you be more specific? Are you talking about giving a gift to someone who's already your client, or are you talking about giving a gift to someone that you want to um, a prospect, for example? Yeah, it's more, we focus much more on the prospect side of things, where it's much harder to actually build rapport. So if you think about it, you have a million different people that are trying to sell the same types of products. Technology has become fairly ubiquitous, you know, as a whole. And, you know, sending a gift to somebody uh, and basically showing that you value their time is insanely powerful compared to the same 70 million sequences and emails and cadences that people are getting. I mean, you're, I'm sure you're BS meter is up to uh, up to here and seeing that somebody's actually just trying to trying to throw you in some sort of a, a template. So this forces somebody to think more about who the person is. You know, Alice is able to figure out who they are in their five to nine, and then we use that as a way to uh, to power the the gifting experience and the investment experience. So I want to know a little bit more because I'm very Please. curious about this. So how would I identify a good gift from someone, mm-hmm. and then would it be a campaign? I'm giving the same gift to all of these people who are in the same role, like how would it work? For example, no, I mean, let's take me as an example, right? Sure. So I run a coaching company. Presumably I want to get to know people, VPs of HR. So mm-hmm. do I select one and really get to know that one person and send them a gift? Or do I send all the VPs of HR some cool HRE gift? No, everybody is an individual person, right? You're not a persona, Right. Mm-hmm. You're not like, you know, Kim, the coach. Right. Or the coach. You're Kim, the coach. Right. And you have your own uh, own you know perspective and your own individuality, you know, that's around that. So the whole basis of Alice mm-hmm. is to make sure that you're building one to one connections at scale. So it does all the hard work for you. So it's able to figure out who the person is. It's able to figure out what they're interested in. And then we have a marketplace of 30,000 products in there, right? And those are all experiences and, you know, uh, could be gift cards, could be physical products, all types of things that we've highly curated that are things that people want, like B2C products. Um, and then you're able to, the system's able to pick out an individual gift for each one of those people. You're able to type an individual message, send that off to the person. And then the beauty of Alice is that we don't send the thing to you. Like how many people have sent me like chocolate? I'm like a gym nut. I don't eat junk food, you know, at all. And, uh, and yet that's the same thing. Or people send me things for like golfing events. I don't golf. I'm a baseball guy, football guy, you know, a basketball guy uh, that's there. So that's what it does. And so when the person gets the gift, we call it an invitation, uh, then the person can either accept that invitation. They can exchange for anything else in the marketplace, right, of, of typically around 2,000 you know, 2, to 2,500 options per price point, or they can donate the value to a charity of their choice. So mm-hmm. you'll see many times, I think we're probably close to about 15% of people end up donating, you know, the, the gift value uh, to charity. So Alice was founded with a double bottom line at the beginning of the business. Like, how do we make sure that giving experience is really amazing between two people? Like you're building a personal experience between two people. How are you making sure you're giving back to the planet? That's why we don't send the thing. It's so wasteful. Nobody, ever, you don't care about the gift. You care about the action on the other end, right? right. The building the relationship. And the final thing is how do we build in just giving back to, you know, to those in need as part of the actual core of the business model. So that's why right from the get-go, that was all built into the Alice uh, model from there. I really, really like it. Can you give me an example of some gift that you gave to someone or that one of your clients gave to someone 
that made an incredible experience for that person who received the gift? Yeah, so I have um, a couple of good examples. So one of them, my favorite, I'll give you like my two favorites that I like giving uh, out there. Uh, one of them is a custom map. So what you can do is you can go on and you can actually pick a location anywhere you want in whatever zooming in or out of, of uh, that location you want. And then it'll actually send you like a super high quality print of that location. So a lot of times I'll learn and I'll figure out that somebody's traveled or lived in like Barcelona or they lived in China or they lived wherever it was. And so I'll send them a map so that they can actually like have a nice printout. And now when they stare at that on the, on their wall, they're always thinking of me. Right. And that's a that's a really good thing. Um, I always ask about kids or pets, you know, at the same time. So for kids, like I love giving Tinker Crate, for example, or Kiwi Crate, depending on what their age is. It's activities, you know, like mm-hmm. a three month set of activities that now they can do their, their child. And now they're thinking about me in terms of, you know, uh, every time they're doing that activity that's there. And again, it's not about me, but it's about like the the ability for that person to be able to 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 do that. And, yeah, I'd say probably 50 to 60 percent of those people end up exchanging for something else that they want. Right. Camping gear or, you know, I don't know, other travel stuff or, or whatever it might be, like they have a million different options they can go into based on what their interests are. So tell me a little bit about you, the your business. How many people do you have? Like, how, mm-hmm. give us a sense of how long have you been doing this? So we actually just celebrated our five-year anniversary. Okay. Um, but... But I always put this as a caveat. Um, I had my daughter right when we when we when I started the business, and uh, so I consider that first year plus not really you know the business because I was really spending time with her, and I just came off my previous business. I'd sold that business, um, so I was like kind of in this like nice let me spend as much time with my daughter as humanly possible and support my wife and, you know, and, and do all that. Um, so we've been really at this, like in the current incarnation of the company for about two and a half years. Um, if you look at, well, how we've been selling, who we've been selling to and everything else, uh, you know, we have tens and tens of thousands of users, you know, we have hundreds of customers. Um, most of them are very large enterprise organizations mm-hmm. uh, that are using it. You can see our website if you want names, you know, that are, that are on top of that, but you know, that's, that's, we're trying to be very, very focused on who we go after and really go deep in that specific segment, you know, of, of folks. And obviously you'll see the business continue to grow. So we've been, we've had a killer year for ourselves this year. So it's been really good. So I love the term in this incarnation of the business, because what that means is changed over time, Yeah, uh, indicating flexibility and uh, ability to kind of make things work when sometimes they weren't initially. So let's talk a little bit about your challenge. What's your greatest challenge today? So as the incarnations have happened, and there's many (laughs) micro incarnations, you know, if you want to, you want to continue on that theme uh, of the business, it's really come to my, my attention that, you know, as we've gone past 100 employees, now it's past 150 employees and nearing, you know, 200 employees. uh, One of the key things that uh, I notice is that my voice I am able to talk to less people as often. And my voice and what I say has heavy, heavy weight because of that fact. So when you look across a business as it's continued to scale and we've gone from, you know, maybe it was what two years ago, we we're at 20 people, 25 people, and now it's 160 or so. And it's very apparent to me that I can't just have those normal interactions. Now, even with COVID, it's even less, you know, yeah. uh, where everybody's working from home. So the key for me is how do I as CEO make sure that my voice and the things that I'm talking about have the right context, both from a timing perspective and then also from a weight perspective. Um, as, uh, as you and I were talking right before we get on here is like, I'm a very uh, off the cuff type of a person, right? I'm trying to become more you know, uh, thoughtful and more planned out in terms of the way that I'm, I'm doing things. And I think I've made improvements there, but they, even that is something where, you know, I could say something off the cuff because I just heard a podcast and like, I'm thinking about something and then somebody feels like, Oh, is that something that's really important now? Instead of it being, Hey, like, you know, this is like a, this is a moment, you know, that's, or, or something I've said that, that, you know, is just a, is more about inquiry, not about action. Okay. So it, it's very interesting because I have a team of coaches and when I first started coaching, uh, everybody thought I could be the only coach. Like, you're the only coach. It's Kim. It's Fairy Mind Coaching. You're the only voice in the company. And I quickly discovered that I didn't want to be the only voice in the company. And so there was a distinction between being the face and the voice, right? So my team of coaches, they can coach. I have no concern whatsoever. So you said you had a baby. Let me let me use that as an, as an analogy. Are you the only person who has ever taken care of your baby? Outside of you and your wife, uh, well, we've had we had a nanny before, and obviously she's in school now. So you know, I mean, it depends on what how do you define. Okay, so care. let's go, let's go, let's go to the nanny. Okay, so before you 
chose your nanny, mm-hmm. right? You maybe interviewed a whole bunch of them. Mm-hmm. You looked at their references and you did all that. But once you chose your nanny, you didn't just say, there's the baby, go get it, see you later, mm-hmm. right? So there's a process of handover. And what was the handover process? You held the baby, you gave the baby to your nanny, you made sure she grabbed it well, it, her, is it a girl or a boy? It's a girl. Yeah. yeah. It's a girl. Your daughter. daughter. My daughter. Yeah. I didn't want to call it an it. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you made sure that the nanny had a good strong hold of your daughter before you let go. Mm-hmm. But for a period of time, you're both holding at the same time. Mm-hmm. Even if it was short, there was a period of time where you were both there. And so what I would encourage you to consider is the same kind of process where right now you're the voice. But maybe what you do is you bring someone right beside you, maybe two people right beside you. So you're the voice together and maybe you lead and they have a tiny play in this. And then slowly they take up a bigger part in things that you do. So you're, you're partnering together where you're like, let's call it on stage or in conversations at the same time and you back off. Mm -hmm. So then there's a handover process. So you might start the conversation and leave. Or you might start the conversation and say, okay, um, as you double up with other people that you know and trust, that you do less and less of the talking. So that's kind of a visual that maybe might help you in terms of what you can do to hand things over. Where you're, you know, at first you're here and then you're slowly, slowly backing up. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I think there's... uh you know, you also don't just hand over the baby and just be like, oh yeah, just go take care of it. You're also typically saying here are all the things you need to know. Right. That's exactly what I was going. I was going there next. Okay. I was going to talk a little bit about training, but coach myself, I guess here, you know? Yes. (laughs) So first it's this concept of you're both holding the baby at the same time. And then you're slowly backing up and you're checking in though, right? Hey, are things okay? Are you comfortable? Have you experienced any problems? oh, the baby was crying, here's what I do when the baby cries, et cetera, right? Conceptually, that's what we're after. But the second piece of it is absolutely a little bit of training about the uniqueness of this baby because not all babies are the same and especially this one, right? You have a unique point of view, you have a unique unique way of coming at this, your values are unique, et cetera. So now the question is, are you spending uh, most of your time facing the public, potential clients, et cetera, And how much time can we carve out for actually training people on the voice, the angle, the concepts, the values, the perspectives, the priorities? And, you know, it's not about you getting more and more silent. It's about helping them more easily be able to take on a voice where they understand philosophically where you're coming from. And so sure, they might use some of your ideas, but that you're also encouraging them to say, so here's the baseline, be creative too. How about in the case though of, I mean, this is just something I'm trying to work on too, um, in terms of like, there's a lot of things moving, right? As a company is scaling, there's so many things that are happening every single day. And there's so many both internal and external factors to the thought process you know, and some of the things that are happening there. Uh, I think that's a good good frame of reference in terms of like how to actually talk and bring folks along on the journey that's there. But there's also the, I would say that's when things are structured, but whatever, when they're unstructured, right? And that's where I'm actually trying to hold that back now, you know, from folks and not say that until I have more of a frame of reference, you know, for it. But that's that's the other, the other challenge. I'll tell you, I'll there. tell you, I think some of the most brilliant things come, come out of unstructured conversation. Mm-hmm. And so what makes sense is not for you not to have unstructured conversation, because that's where your genius comes from. Mm -hmm. It's when you talk, you're like, oh, my God, I just said something really smart. Right? That's what Mm -hmm. happens. So I don't want you not to talk. I want you to talk. That's where that's the brilliance. But what's really important is to debrief after you talk. Mm -hmm. So you say, I said this. It's a one off. You don't have to use it ever again. Or you say, I said this. Let's put it in our, in our training manual. It was so good, right? And that's the distinction. It's the post-random conversation debrief that needs to happen. Yep. 
right? So again, I'll use, I'll use an example. When I train coaches, we have a series of concepts, principles, and strategies for coaching. They didn't come from a book. They came from here, right? That's it. Here's how we do it. Well, the other day I was having a conversation with someone who was talking about someone in her life who was constantly, constantly kind of putting her down and giving her all the list of things she was doing wrong. And I said, hey, you know, just because she gives you a mango, you don't have to eat it, especially when you know every mango she gives you is rotten. Stop eating rotten mangoes. That doesn't come from a book. But I'm like, wow, that was a good one. Mm-hmm. Stop eating rotten mangoes. And again, random, never came up before, came up in one conversation. And I said, that's good. That can be used in other coaching scenarios too. Mm -hmm. Just because someone gives you a mango and historically it has always been opened up and rotten. You don't have to keep eating those mangoes. Right. So for you, it's the same thing. Some things that come out of your mouth are going to be genius, brilliant. Just because they only came out once doesn't mean they can't come out a million times again. Well, I think the, the uh, I mean, I think that's uh, glorifying my geniusness, but that's definitely, most of the things I say are not genius. You know, a lot of it is just, you know, uh, either searching for conversation. And I think the issue is that I just, again, I, I need to take more time and actually build construct and context around the statement, you know, and, and the whatnot, you know, that's happening there. I think what happens is, you know, your time is pulled so thin on that, that, you know, I just forget to do that many times, you know? So it's a habit that I think I just need to put more into play. I like the pre or the post brief. I forgot what you just called it, you debrief. know, there, I think that debrief, you know, which I think is an interesting, uh, interesting angle on that, which is, okay, Hey, you know, we just said this, you know, what are the actions? What are the thoughts that come out of this? Um, yeah. And I'll push you one step further because I'm guessing, and I might be totally wrong. Like you seem like a, an action g- kind of guy. You take action, you make things, you move things fast. And so if one of those action items was we're creating a handbook, an, an alice.com handbook and for mm-hmm. internal use, you might assign someone to put things in that handbook. And so in the debrief, you might say that goes in the handbook. So someone's capturing it. And the moment it's in writing, it becomes a little more tangible, a little more real, and it becomes part of your playbook. And I think, you know, again, your, I, I just get a feel your playbook is very, very unique. And so that has to be captured so that it can be passed along to the next hundred people who join your company who won't be able to necessarily get it from you directly. Yeah, I think there's, uh, those are on the bigger things, right? And a lot of times, uh I'm very much a brainstorm out loud type of a person, right? That's my, my thing. I think there's different personalities. Some people like to be very contemplative in or thinking, come up with some sort of a, a um, you know, hypothesis on something or decision on something and then try and work their way backwards from that, right? Or some people get emotionally attached to that. I'm much the opposite or I'm kind of like always searching and pushing the envelope and using my, my thought process to, you know, to, to challenge folks. And sometimes I think that can come across as like doubting, Um, instead of it coming across as like, just understanding, Hey, I don't think this is, you know, this, this is something I actually want to talk about, not because I don't feel like you're, you're actually doing your job well. So that's another thing that I think is a really big challenge when you're thinking about it's the, the micro versus the macro conversations, you know, like there's philosophical, bigger things. And then there's the smaller, like micro things that I think, um, you know, I'm using that I think can also cause some of the doubt, which is something else I'd love to just hear your thoughts on too. So, so I think what you're talking about is how you process. You're talking about how you process information, how you solve problems, how you think things through the how part. Mm-hmm. And, and for you, the important component is to tell people, here's how I'm doing this. This is my thinking process. Mm-hmm. So let me show you not only what I'm thinking, but how I'm thinking. So again, the debrief is very useful, but in this case, it's the pro brief. I don't know if that word exists, but it's the, it's the, here's what I'm about to do kind of con- conversation. Pre-brief. Mm-hmm. Pre-brief. There you go. Um, right. The thing that happens before and say, Hey, there's, you know, like my mind is spinning. I just want you to know, I want to talk this out because I think that we can come up with an even better solution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when they know where you're coming from and what your intentions are, they don't feel uncomfortable. They don't feel 
you know, like they're coming in, into question. They sort of start to understand, here's the way he comes at it. Okay, fine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it goes back to the context thing. I like that idea about the intentions um, and just stating that out. It's funny, I was listening to a podcast the other day um, and it was with Claire Johnson from Stripe. I don't know if she's still there or not. Um, this is a podcast from maybe like a year ago and she's talking about how she created a one pager on how to work with me, you know? And I think that's something that we're, I've, I've been considering doing, you know, even just for myself, you know, I started a draft of that like last week, uh, just so like, people can understand like where I'm coming from, you know, on that as well. So. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's that concept, except that you also have some fine, you know, mm-hmm. it's probably working with you is not just a, 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 a flat yeah. experience. You also have some moments. And so even so you want to capture what you're about to do before you yep. do it. And then once you do it, you want to say, Hey, here's what just happened. Yep. Right. Yep. Here's the good stuff. Here's the not so good stuff. And it's okay to have not so good stuff in order for us to find the good stuff. Yeah. So that they're comfortable with that process from start to finish mm-hmm. and they know where you're coming from. Yeah. 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 I think that's, that's uh, well put. Yep. Yeah. It's your baby. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know, it's not my mango. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> no yeah. rotten mangoes here. No rotten mangoes here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I hope helpful. that was helpful. Yeah. That's very helpful. Yeah. Right. I think it's, you know, it's something that I feel like, I know it's good to have a reminder. It's also good to have a different frame frame of reference or a different perspective, you know, on that as well, because it's something where I'm always thinking about that. Um, and I know it gets me into hot water, especially with folks that have different personalities that are more contemplative and, you know, inward, inward versus me, who's much more like outward. Hey, let's go. Like, here's the thought process, blah, blah, blah. And that, that I think, you know, uh, is where, where I think that friction, you know, is coming. I get it. And it sounds like you need to verbally talk things out. And when they hear you talking, maybe what goes on in their mind is, oh, no, another change. Oh, no, we didn't do it right. Yeah, oh, no, I, I'm I will tell criticized. You, yeah, and I will tell you, I've, I've definitely made marked improvement there, but it still comes up. And I think it's it's more amplified because of the time I'm able to devote to different folks, you know, in the business versus where it used to be before I could have a half an hour conversation or an hour walk around wherever it was, you know, go back a year ago, even, you know, so that's, that's just the, that's the fundamentals that, that, you know, I want to empower the team. And I also want to make sure that I'm understanding my, my ability to influence you know, and how I'm influencing even in the subconscious, I think is the bigger, the bigger thing, which is what I'm trying to be like very perceptive to, but it's very, it's tricky because yeah, I I have to constantly remind myself and be thinking, you know, about that. And that's just like against my normal personality. You know, in university, they used to tell us how to write essays by saying, say what you're going to say, say it, then say what you just said. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you need to get, you know, what you need to start doing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I was an art student, so it was probably more more relevant to like, well, just sketch it out and then paint it, and they can always repaint it, you know. <laughs> okay, that <laughs> works thing, too. Sorry, you know, since we're going on metaphors here, but yeah, there you go. yeah, that's that's it. Cool, Greg. Thank you yeah. so much for thank being on my podcast. Too. It was such a pleasure. It was great to meet yeah. you. You as well. Uh, for those of you who are listening, if there's a challenge that you have that you want to share on the podcast, please reach out to me. My email address is kim at frameofmindcoaching.com. And if you have a challenge that you're not so willing to share on the podcast, but still want to discuss, please reach out to me as well. My email address is kim at frameofmindcoaching.com. Greg, wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. It was great to meet you. You as well. Thanks.